Dalmia, this is a name associated with the development of Indian industry almost since independence. But where industry has been part of the Dalmia story, another story is being written by a newer member of the family who is working for senior citizens to give them lives of dignity, self-respect and happiness. We had a chance to speak with this lady from the Dalmia family who is doing outstanding work in the field of social development. Her name, Archana Dalmia. Ms. Dalmia, the first question is that when you have a family name like Dalmia, Pura Desh, Dunya Bharim, a lot of people know it, and one of the most distinguished industrial families of India. How does it feel? It feels good, but it feels good with its responsibility. It's the name of the father's father's name, and it's a family name that you have to keep up to. So there's a lot of, it's a mixed feeling. It has a lot of responsibility besides having a feel-good feeling. You are from an elite family, you have gone to elite schools, you have gone to elite colleges. Then how did you feel like this social service? It's not social service. It's just service which I feel from, you know, it's, I can't even say it's social service. It's just something that I like to do that makes me feel good. I, when I was very young, I was a kid, and I used to see this companion my mother had, who she had brought from Nagpur. And I used to always stay with her. And she was old, so every time she had an ailment, it would disturb me. And it would disturb me to the extent that when I was sleeping with my mother and she was sleeping in the next room and she used to groan and moan, I used to get up quietly from the bed. I used to go and peep from the door. I must have been about maybe four or five years old. And I used to actually want to see her chest pounding up and down to see whether she was breathing. And it disturbed me no end to see a woman who I had such a lot of affection for, suffering. And then I realized it was her age. I think she had arthritis, so she used to groan and moan because her legs used to pain. So that was it. Then you have decided that the proud of the people who are senior citizens, the young people, I'm not like that, I'm also a young man, but the young people, you will do a lot of things in their You've dedicated your life. The sad part of it is that people are so much into themselves that they don't realize that they have to reach the same stage and age eventually. So, you know, people who are living in this cloud and with that they neglect the old, they don't realize that someday they might be neglected too. I remember doing, uh, when I was in college, I, I went to Japan to do this eight-week course on senior citizens. And I visited a lot of homes. I didn't even know how I'd be able to contribute. And I still don't know how I'm contributing. But I really feel for this section. I ran a grievance cell as part of my establishment. And every single day, I used to get a case in which Children had abandoned their parents. A daughter-in-law was mean to her father-in-law and mother-in-law. Children who had got properties written onto their names and then abandoned their parents. So every single day in the grievance cell that I ran, I had people like this coming and it disturbed me no end. Especially because I feel parents all their lives they do so much for their children, and when it comes to the turn of the children, they just abandon them because they have no time. In our society, in our society, we don't have this system that when our parents are old, we put them out of the house and put old people's home. This is not our parampara. So why did this come to the people? We are doing the love of the old people, but how did this change come to the change? Why did this come to the change? I think that nuclear families have been very selfish in people. I'll tell you about a small case. I went to an old age home in Gurgaon. And this was in 1994. 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 And
and I spoke to one man who had, uh, he had studied in the London School of Economics. He was in a corner, so I went to talk to him. I asked him, why are you here? Where are your children? He said, one of my sons is in London and one, my other son is in Noida. I said, do they ever come here to visit you? He says, no, they never come here to visit me and I don't want them to come because I'm so much at peace with myself over here. Then my daily abusiveness at home. So I think in a way, maybe the old age homes are going to be better, that people will have companions of their own sort where there's no difference between one inmate and another. And they all live in harmony. But at home, the daily insults from either the children or the wives or the grandchildren, which is seldom from the grandchildren, but from the parents, it's better that the old age homes like what they've started abroad. What motivates you? What keeps you going? I can't answer that question, but it just touches me to see old people and abandoned people. I feel the same for animals. I feel the same for children. But senior citizens definitely disturb me. They disturb me because nobody wants them. Children, you know, at least there's somebody who might want them. But senior citizens are people who've become useless to people. So our whole purpose or whole being is, if you can do something for me, then I'll feel for you, otherwise I won't. It's a very mercenary life that people are leading. So what motivates me is this, that one has to do something for them because we are all going to reach our twilight years. I don't think there's anybody who doesn't reach that stage unless they die young. <laughs>